Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How wonderful to be with you today, my friend. And let me tell you something, it is so gorgeous in Florida today. If it were like this all year long, we would have a lot more people moving in than we do right now. But um, if you're thinking of moving, we don't have any more room. And don't bring your car, okay? The, oh, traffic's getting so heavy in Florida. And uh, when you have a day like this, boy, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made. It's just a beautiful, beautiful gift. You're going to be glad you tuned in today. Going to be talking to uh, Gwen Bragg about a pretty tough subject, but it's far more common. Uh, it's one of those they try to keep covered up all the time, but it's quite common. And that is unfaithfulness in a marriage and pornography. And it's destroying marriages, it's destroying lives, it's destroying families. And she has an up close and personal uh, relationship with this story. And she wrote a book, The Beautiful Ugly Truth. And it's an Amazon bestseller. That's kind of impressive, it's impressive isn't it? She's a very fine writer. And um, she can tell you her story like no one else can. I'm going to join Stephanie, get this, cranberry pecan chicken salad. This is cranberry time, isn't it? Yes. And I wonder how many chicken salads there are in the whole wide world because you can just take those any direction you want. This one looks really good. Cranberries and pecans, does it get any better than that? We'll fix it for you. And I again want to offer you the booklet, Resting in His Shadow. I don't know when in the any time in my life that we've needed a word from the Lord like we do right now. And I appreciate these booklets that have those messages and the scriptures and prayers that can help you resting in his shadow. And it's for you for, for you, for any amount you choose what you want to pay. Okay. Um, we're look, our address is, and we're located at 6922 142nd Avenue, but we use the box number. Yes. Box 6922, mm -hmm. Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Mm -hmm. And uh, our number for your credit cards, 1-800-229-0059. And uh, we will get it out to you. It's a wonderful little book. And especially in the evening, I think it'll help you settle down and go to sleep more easily. Do you mm -hmm. have a problem going to sleep? Yes. Uh, you know? <laughs> I do, because I can't shut my brain down. Yes, and uh, we've, we've talked about that, and I think it's very prevalent because our na nation and culture just in an uproar. Mm -hmm. Well, that, and I'll lay down to go to sleep and then I'm doing grocery shopping in my head. I'm mm -hmm. doing meal planning in my head. I'm buying gifts in my, all the things. Mm -hmm. All right, what shall I do? So we have a great guest today, but she brought with her our favorite missionary. It's so exciting to see yes, Linda Brown. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, New Frontiers our, Health Come Force. here, Linda, Check just it out. for a second. <laughs> I'm not mic'd. That's yeah. okay, I'll come right now. here. Yeah. Uh, Linda worked here how many years? Oh, a long time. Yeah. Long time. And I am so proud of this girl because she, she, I always knew that this wasn't your place. Well, it is. I love this place. I know it, but family. I knew. Did you know? Could you tell? Oh, listen. An undercurrent, undercurrent she needed here. her babies. Yeah, I did. And yeah. the Lord gave her uh, 100, yeah. over 130. Yeah. God was pulling oh, her I just got to, to Africa and she has started a school mm -hmm. there. How many years now? The school's been open seven years now, but I've been there, ooh, 13. I wish you could see some of the pictures. You She's going to come back go and we'll on, bring yeah. them. Go on, on Facebook, New Frontiers Health Force, and check her out. And you, if you want to sow good seed, huh. I promise you Absolutely. Right yes. I'm, I'm so for Christian education. Now, one more quick one. Yes. These gorgeous kids that yes. she has, where do they get their outfits? They're all dressed alike. They, oh. they look super. We get them from town. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. They have to, you know, they, they started selling them since we've been there a while. I'm talking to your chest. Yeah. <laughs> but since we've been there a while, they started selling them in our local market. Yeah. But and you can, can help. Them. You yes, can help you can help. help. And there's nothing like a good education. I yes. think my audience has heard me before. Get them saved and then educate them, right. please. She's changing the world. Yes, she one is. One at a time. Yep. Just one at a time. And, one. and she and Dr. Tanya will be back in a few weeks, and okay. we're going to tell them the whole story. We will. Yes. Love you guys. Love you all. <laughs> <You're good>. Yep. <laughs> Uh, she was here a long time she was and a total delight but i always felt that something else was out there for her she was meant for yeah. so much more. okay what yes. do we do? okay so you have is that rotisserie chicken you bought is that yes. did you get yes. some rotisserie chicken um you have 
four green mm -hmm. onions, you have a cup of pecans or pecans, depending on where you're from, mm -hmm. and a half a cup of dried cranberries. Mm -hmm. Do I mix all those? Yes, please. I have a half a cup of mayo, a quarter cup of sour cream. I have, what else do I have? Two tablespoons of honey. This is gonna be so good. Uh-huh. Two tablespoons of honey. Yes, I have that dressing a tablespoon is something else. of Dijon mustard, fancy gray poupon. I have a tablespoon of poppy seeds. I'm gonna mix this all up first and then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Super, super easy, but this is gonna be Delicious. Cran dry cranberries and chicken salad, the best. It adds that little kick of sweetness. I have a really good chicken salad recipe, but this one I think will come very, very close. It already just smells good. Mm -hmm. Let me do a little bit of salt. Whoops, it's been sitting here a while. Okay, I'll and get of course this you mixed can up. Bake, you can bake your own chicken. Yes. But On a Sunday afternoon, throw a bunch of chicken in the oven, let it bake, and then you have chicken for the week. Yep. You can shred it. You can chop it. You know, you ought to write a Make book it for on salads. all your shortcuts and... Go on my blog. <laughs> yes, yeah, she has a blog. Yes, stephanieoneal.com. I'm putting all this kind of information okay. on it. Yes. So we're going to mix the two together. In fact, I updated it today with recipes, Thanksgiving ideas, and some Christmas ideas. Well, the truth is, she writes on that blog from experience. Yes. She's done it. She didn't just read a book. Right. Oh boy. Oh, this smells so good. Now you want to mix this together and then you put it in the refrigerator and let all these flavors marry let together. It hang out. Oh my gosh. Put it on a yummy roll mm -hmm. or a lettuce wrap even mm -hmm. if you're doing a low carb. Uh, you know, I'm so, I don't know, there's something so thankful in my heart about CTN and Linda going from CTN to the mission field mm -hmm. and starting a school, we are truly workers together. Yes. You can't take all the credit for nope. anything. Mm -mm. Okay, here we go. I'm here just going to take one tiny yep, bite because yep. I got to talk. Yes, we have an amazing guest today. Mm -hmm. You don't want to yes, miss it. Yes, we do. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. That little kick of Dijon mustard, excellent. I'm having a moment. You have a moment. You can get this recipe. <laughs> Go ahead. Go the ahead. easiest I'm way you want to, you can email Wanda. You can send a self-addressed stamped envelope to see, uh, the P.O. box. But all the information will come up on the screen. And all the ingredients are coming up on the screen, too. So if you can just get those, that's all you need. And I'm going to have some of that for lunch tomorrow. By that time, oh, so good. it will be... Joy Unspeakable. Yes. Okay. All right. I want you to meet my guest, uh, Gwen Bragg, and hear her story. It's absolutely, cur it'll curl your hair. But you know what? Our God can redeem anything. Don't go anywhere. Anything. You your situation is not impossible. Stay Amen. right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. I am so uh, happy to welcome to the program Gwen Bragg. And I always like to give you a heads up. <clears throat> uh, be sure you check out the website. You can get the book there and Amazon and for Amazon. sure. Uh, because, and make note of it because after you hear this conversation, you might think of someone that could really benefit from it. And there's a lot of people that could benefit from this, not just from the one topic, but just of how you get through very difficult things. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank Glad you. to have you. You used to be a Floridian. I used to be a Floridian mm -hmm. and now I'm a from Atlanta, a Georgian. I'm yes. a Georgian. I'm a George Peach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I uh, I love Georgia. I, mm. I really it's a beautiful place. Um, I like the fall do you know leaves. what? I want you to just kind of uh, give us an overview of your story, and then we'll wow. kind of get into the uh, basics of sure. the reason you could sit there and smile like you are and it's not <laughs> fake. I can tell a fake smile. Oh, You're yes. a preacher's wife. You can too. <laughs> uh, so, um, but give, give us an overview instead of me asking you some questions. Just okay. Well, um, 
my husband and I, I will say that we are getting ready to celebrate 30 years of marriage. Praise the this Lord. This December. Yeah. So I'm very, very honored and excited. Um, we got married when we were little kids. <laughs> <laughs> And um, we're excited to be celebrating. So all is well. But um, he was a pastor, a full-time pastor for a while, an associate pastor, youth pastor, and just growing in, in that role. And so he was a minister full-time vocational for 18 years. And um, probably around year 12 or 13, it was just like something, there was a disconnect. Uh, emotional disconnection, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I started asking him, are we good? Are we good? How are things, you know? And because he told me we were good, um, I started feeling unsettled and I thought something was wrong with me. Yeah. And um, so it went on for several years and um, we had stepped down from full-time vocational ministry to go part-time and I was working as an interior designer for years and he was helping me in the business and I just kept praying like something's just not right. Um, so we got back into full-time ministry because that's what you do when something's not right. You go back. <laughs> <laughs> Where you can really be effective, yeah. <laughs> and um, anyways, I just kept asking him and it was about a five-year journey and was dealing with a lot of anxiety because I thought it was me. And um, I reached out to my friend that you just pulled up on the show, Linda Brown, and she met me one night and I said, something's just not right. She gave me a business card for a licensed mental health counselor. And I thought, what is wrong with me? I'm a pastor's wife that can't hold my life together. Mm -hmm. um, but come to find out, um, as the things, you know, they say what takes you to counseling is probably not really what you need the counseling for. The real for. reason, yeah. So I was about a month into counseling and told my counselor how upset I was and how mad and anxious and I didn't know why I felt this way. And the curtain, as we talked about, began to pull back. And so um, my husband was involved with just an emotional connection with someone at the church. Uh, that made me feel uncomfortable, but that's not what we needed counseling for. And so as we dove into counseling and um, the secrets started to come forth. And so pornography was the huge secret. It's a scourge across the nation and there's uh, more of it in the church than you would ever guess. It's interesting though, um, this flirtatious thing that he had with uh, I guess a younger girl or something, um, that was the thing that led to the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I kind of assume in what I understood from your book, um, you didn't know a whole lot about pornography. <laughs> you had no clue. I had blinders, <laughs> you know. I'd grown up in the church and my uncle was a pastor, and, and though I tried to run my own way in life and make my own decisions when I was 24 years old, I came back to the Lord and asked Him to take over my life and met my husband, and and we became pastors, and I was, I was his wife and didn't know how to kind of live in that initially, um, but we just grew up in the church, and so. Yeah, and um, you, you kind of kept after him until the truth came out. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing profitable will happen unless until the truth is in the light. It, it's mm -hmm. got to be in the bright light. What do you think it was that, because this is an awful secret. It is. Uh, he didn't want anybody to know this. No. But what was it that pressured him to come clean? Um, just months of counseling and I um, had told him that me and we had two boys at the time. Uh, well, Were we you still, both in counseling? Uh, I was in counseling first and because I thought it was just me and my anxiety and um, I told him that if he didn't come clean me and the boys were going home and it wasn't to our house that we lived here in Tampa that we were going back to Georgia was home for us. And Didn't the counselor say something like anxiety is your friend? 
She did. She said, um, setting in one of our first couple of counseling sessions, because I just was just so, you feel out of control. And she said, you'll learn that anxiety will be a gift for you. Mm -hmm. And I told her it didn't feel like a gift. But as time has progressed, I can see what a gift it is because it's your internal clock telling you that something's not right. And if you dig and you press and you trust the Holy Spirit, He'll lead you. And so I had gone on a fast um, and asked the Lord to reveal the truth. And He led me to a passage in Mark 9 that said, whatever's hidden, I'll yeah. bring to light. Um, whatever's in secret, I'll expose. And I thought, ta-da. Yes, pull here the we, curtain back. Pull the curtain back, here we are. But I didn't realize just the journey that was gonna take and the heartache it was gonna take and the broken trust that it was gonna take and um, how to walk in that forgiveness and to rebuild trust back. It wasn't overnight, it mm -hmm. took many years. Well, what did he think of you being in the counseling by yourself, he knew he was the problem. <laughs> I love you, Mark. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he talks about um, deception. Mm -hmm. And he said that he didn't realize how bad he was deceived. Mm -hmm. And that's the scary thing about deception. You know, when, when you're not, and, and it wasn't that he wasn't in the Word. It was just like the Holy Spirit had just not revealed all that that was going on and uh, it just it took courage and and s some fortitude to mm -hmm. you know again he thought it was me and my anxiety and well um, how did he get rid of it uh, it's, it's, it's a horrible addiction over 40 million Americans view pornography on a daily basis. Over half the pastors on, on the platform, and this is not to throw a black eye at pastors. I'm so grateful. My husband's a wonderful one. Um, but there's secrets that they hold. Okay, how do we get the statistics? You can, you oh. can there's statistics in the book. There's, there's um, websites, covenant I mean, eyes. on the pastors. Uh, one in seven, they say, senior pastors. One in five youth pastors, one in seven senior pastors <clears throat> deal with this secret. Um, and it's not to expose them to hurt them, but expose it to heal it. And, and Mark just, he had to come clean. Mm -hmm. And once he came clean and we started really digging into healing our marriage and stuff, the anxiety went completely away. Yeah, it's not as big a deal once you get the light on it. Once the light is on it. Yeah, that's just so powerful to me because any psychologist, and we have Dr. David Clark on here mm -hmm. every month, will tell you it's the hardest addiction to get rid of. Yeah. But once you just confess your faults one to another, right? Um, if it's not a married person, but you've got that addiction, right? Go to someone. Right. He said that the power of pornography lies in the secret. Mm -hmm. And so once you can get it out into the open, like James says, confess your sins one to another so that you will be healed. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what happens when we sit and we talk and we talk about ways where we miss the mark to where God can come in and heal us. Um, it was just, it was powerful for us. And so accountability, get yourself into some accountability with it. Um, he has um, a group that he leads with men called 1722, and it's, it's out of um, the scripture where Samson and Delilah, uh, and that issue there, and you mm -hmm. know, they put Samson on a grinding wheel, and they cut his hair. The strength of, of Samson was in his hair, and they cut his hair, and they put him on a grinding wheel. And in verse 1722, it said, but the hair on his head began to grow, meaning the strength of God was coming back to him. And so we watched when the secret was exposed, um, when he got himself into accountability, when he was, we were able to talk about it freely. Uh, and it took months to talk about it freely because there was hurt on my part. Mm -hmm. um, God began to heal us. Mm -hmm. If you just joined me, I'm talking to Gwen Bragg, the author of A Beautiful Ugly Truth. And I, I absolutely know that 
our conversation so far, there's a lot of people out there who identify with it. And uh, I believe that's the reason that God brings us these kind of guests. And I look at it from your husband's point of view and the shame and the deceit mm -hmm. and the grip that something so obnoxious could have on your right. life. And then I look at you, probably madder than a hornet at Ooh. times. Woo, don't get in Gwen's way right now. Ooh. And then uh, anger and mm -hmm. hurt. All the stages of grief. Uh-huh. Uh, and you're sitting there obviously very fi fond of this guy. So <laughs> how do you get from there to there? <laughs> a lot of prayer, a lot of counseling, a lot of reading. Uh, I learned that forgiveness and trust were two different things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I knew my responsibility according to the Word of God in Matthew that I had to forgive. Um, but forgiveness is is more than just I forgive you. Oh yes, yeah, we you know have a lot of that. So the responsibility became on him to rebuild trust back. Um, I have to you know after forgiveness and being willing to walk into it and through it with him, there was still triggers along the way, um, and I had to forgive him for the impact of of the hurt that he caused. Um, and then he had to take it and run with it and, and say, I'm an open book. You have my phone records. You have my computer. Mm -hmm. You have my passwords. You know, I never meant to. And, and let me say this. He didn't, he wasn't a pastor who was introduced to pornography. A lot of, a lot of men are introduced to pornography when they're children. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, the average yes. age. We've is had a, him sitting in that chair. Average age, they say, is 11 that a kid can first be exposed to pornography. And so it didn't start with him as a grown man. Right. It started when he was a kid. It was there when he married you. Mm -hmm. It was there way before he married me. And um, marriage, I believe, is meant to heal one another if we do it with God at the center of, the, mm -hmm. of it. And, and he was there for me to help me unpack my baggage and I wanted to be there to help him unpack his baggage. Mm -hmm. um, it was not easy. Um, there was days it was hard. I, there were words in me that I didn't know lived in this little pastor's wife's body. Um, me expressing. <laughs> they came out of your mouth a couple oh, times. Oh, <laughs> yes, they did. They came out one time in the counselor's office and I went, oh, I'm sorry. And she said, I've heard worse. <laughs> Pre preacher's wife used a bad word. <laughs> So um, um, your story, I've known this for a long time, but your story really reemphasized the wonder of the light, mm -hmm. the light of his word. The, it just, it heals, it does miracles. And mm -hmm. um, to think of the torture that he lived under, under those years, all right. those years, because he brought it into the marriage. Right. And a, a fearful, fearful young man. Mm -hmm. do, want to let the secret out. Yeah. Um, is there any temptation now? I, I'm, I think you have the relationship now mm -hmm. that you kind of mm -hmm. let it all hang out with each other. Well, we're older now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not as young as we used yeah. to be. Um, but, you know, we uh, invest in our marriage now. And so... Oh, I hope people heard that. Um, it is important to, um, for us to just connect, look into each other's eyes, ask the questions. How are you doing? How's things going? Are you struggling? And, and just, you know, he says, when you're able to live in the truth, opposed to what he was, you know, in, in darkness about, I don't ever want to go back there. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been a blessing to watch him and his fortitude. And, and he says, the more I talk about it, uh, the more I'm set free. That um, is awesome. So he, he talks about it. He, he tells other men about it. I think we have no idea what forgiveness is and what true love is. Um, we all the know, know the love chapter. 
yeah. First Corinthians 13. But Paul Johnson rewrote that a little bit, which really made it so plain to me that I've never reached that. But it says, love is always patient, loyal and true. Love will never selfishly pursue. Mm -hmm. Love does not uncover the wrong in review. Mm -hmm. Love abides when others are untrue. Mm -hmm. Love can bear rejection and injustice. Mm -hmm. Love has faith when everything goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And forever there will be faith, hope, and love. But yeah. the greatest okay. of them all is love. And when I go over those lyrics, I thought, I wonder if I love anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I adore my children. I would die for them. But when you put your own life up against those words, yeah. it takes something supernatural to live them. One of the chapters in the book I talk about um, being doing some retail therapy one day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I had gone nothing like it. Nothing like retail therapy. Uh -huh. And um, I was in a store and I was in the home decor aisle and there was a plaque, the First Corinthians 13 plaque. Love is patient. Love is kind. And, and I rem was sitting there feeling conviction but feeling justified. Yes. Uh, I was angry still. I was working through all the stages mm -hmm. of grief. But I, I was also confronted with the fact that my love test had just failed because <laughs> I was not patient. I was not kind. And, and I remember standing there with this $12 plaque in my hand going, I can't do this. Yeah. And the, I remember God just speaking to my heart. And he's, First John says that God is love. And he said, if you take my name and replace it with love, you'll see who I am. God yeah. is patient. God is kind. Yeah. And at the end of that First Corinthians 13 chapter, it said, uh, love never fails. And I remember just standing there going, mm -hmm. God never will fail us. Never. And the, uh, the truth is we can't, manifest that kind of love. It's only through the Holy Spirit that oh we can do it. And I could talk to you all day, but we're out of time. And Just I like wanna, that. Yeah, <laughs> I want to thank you for being with us. This is the book again, The Beautiful Ugly Truth. And um, I want to thank you so much for being with us. You have no idea how much we appreciate you. We appreciate all of our viewers. So precious. Thank you for all the financial blessing you give to the program to keep it on the air. And we will join you next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.